Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 82 of the Pika Serenity Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Emilson, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Anomaly. Hello! And this week, we have a whole lot more news about patch 9.1.5. They are really, like, just, like, throwing these changes at us, like, just change after change after change just over the wall into the community um so we've got ptr servers up we've got news about the aoe caps uh spoilers they're going away and um a bunch of other stuff that has <laughs> come out so we're gonna be talking about that today but before we get to that uh you want to talk about our progression from this week Sure, sure, sure. Um, I guess maybe I guess I'll go first. Um, since you asked me. Um, but yeah, so we uh we got down um Kel'Thuzad this week. Um, congrats. Like on the second half of our second night on it, yeah. Um, so pulled it exactly fifty times, uh, to kill Solid. it, which is the exact amount of times we pulled Fate Scribe actually. <laughs> so fifty and fifty, very very weird when I looked that up. But um, but no. So does about fifty pulls in. It's I hate it. It's so I think I've said yeah. this before. It's it's the worst second to last it, boss ever. This no okay SLG is still worse. I will maintain that. Oh fair um, fair. Because SLG had this like stop DPS sit here AFK for thirty seconds while you wait for the ads to stack up, kind of nonsense, and also had just so many bugs. Even after they did all the bug fixes, there were still you know. You died, we died to the phantom like spinning blades from nowhere, just fair, like fair. killing you. Like, uh, SLG was worse, but this boss does not. If like, I, I'll contend it's, it's in it's, that it's league, up there. yeah, it's up there as, as an SLG, yeah. Because I mean, like, for, for us, the biggest so we killed it, happy to do it. Like, we killed it actually on, I think, only our third uh, clean into phase three final phase pull right so like the yeah. final phase is a joke it's super boring um the yeah. biggest thing you just got to make sure people don't walk into like the little ads that spawn and blow up right that's the yeah the biggest okay. issue but the the problem i have with that fight is that it's so timing dependent that like seconds matter and it's like the yeah and but seconds only matter in a 30 second window which is like the inner like generally like your intermission pushes right like you yeah. basically have to push in the intermission in the final like four to five seconds of the intermission or like you just your cooldowns aren't up for the next time you want to kill all the spikes right because that's the, the way we did it so yeah yeah i mean we, we got it down it, it's just and then we have like our venthyr boomkins who like if one of them just rolls the dice and hits 100 like the boss downstairs like the last 10 percent just disappears and you're just like i don't know what to do here yeah um uh so, that's actually so we're also on kt um yeah and having that same problem we have, I don't know how many wipes we've got at this point. It's got to be around like 35, 40. Um, and haven't seen phase three yet. But what's wiping us very consistently is just like trying to balance the upstairs damage with the downstairs damage in the intermissions. So we spent yeah. a while, actually, there's an extra like wrinkle to the, the timings with the way we're doing it. We have three Benthir Boonkin. Um, very cool. Uh, they have to precast Ravenous Frenzy uh, before the first intermission in order to have it up for the second intermission. We didn't know that. So we wasted yeah. like 15 pulls yesterday, or on Friday, figuring that out. Um, which meant that like we reached the second intermission a bunch of times and we're, they were like, Ravenous Frenzy is not up. We cannot, cannot do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then just a bunch of time trying to figure out like how to make the CDs or like the, the timings line up so that we kill we didn't like get out of the intermission phase with like two banshees up in a an abomination. Um and then just immediately lose eight people to the banshees whale doing four hundred percent damage. Yeah, yeah. So the funny thing is we fix that by flexing a hunter into and out of downstairs. So like <laughs> If we the cooldowns right worked out well, <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was the only way we did it was that we basically would call it going into the intermission if the hunter went mm -hmm. down or stayed up, and so if they the cooldowns weren't ready like or they they didn't have what they needed the hunter went down and helped and would come back up if they were ahead, 
um, or vice versa, stay up if they had all their cooldowns ready. So, so our downstairs group now after at the end of Friday night, and this is I think how we're gonna kill it. We have three Boomkin and two Paladins. Um, going okay, down. and uh, there's a Holy Paladin as well. So six total people. Everybody else is upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, and the rep paladins, one of them is pressing wings every time. The other one is only pressing wings if it's necessary. <laughs> That's awful. That sucks yeah. for the second one. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we were starting, we, we had this like really awkward curve on Friday where like the start of the night, we were very consistently making it out of the first intermission with everything dead, everything was great. We were pushing out of the intermission like 15 seconds too fast. Yeah. Um, and when we would get to the second intermission, partially as a result of that, partially because they weren't precasting Rav, we wouldn't have any of the Ravenous Frenzies. And we couldn't send like the eight people downstairs that, or the eight DPS downstairs that would be required to actually push it without the Ravenous Frenzies um, and still kill the stuff upstairs. Yeah. So yeah, that's. We, we had this, like, really awkward where, like, the first half of the night, we were actually making it to the second intermission and, and progressing that, even though the reason we were wiping to it was actually a, our first intermission. So then we spent the second half of the night progressing the first intermission more with, like, different setups. It was, it's a miserable fight. I do not, like... Yeah. The, the kind of thing where where you've reached a later point in the fight and you realize that, oh, we have to actually go back and basically reprogress an earlier part of the fight in order to make this later part of the fight actually doable. Sucks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's what, I think that's, yeah, my, I guess you more eloquently describe my issue with, like, the timings where, like, the actual push timings that matter are, like, in the intermission and it's, like, the final 10 seconds, right? And either if you're yeah. too early, if you're too early in intermission one, you might as well just wipe because intermission two and three are just going to be that much further off. And then, yeah, yeah. I mean, like we we ended up doing two, which I think was helpful. Was so before, so the first set of spikes you kill right underneath the boss, use all your cooldowns, you're fine. And then subsequently, the original way we were doing it was the second and third. We would just leave up. No one would hit them. Leave yeah. them up. Um, and what we ended up changing because what would happen is that our problem was to get to the third set of spikes and cooldowns and would not be up. CDs. Yeah, so we would basically say, okay, like Boomkins and Mages, if you want a Blizzard and you Starfall on the second set, you're fine. And okay. then we'd call once there's like a set of tank ads that go out, and then you come back in and cooldowns will have been up, but like there's a window where you can get everybody together there. We'd basically call people to turn around, just AOE them down quickly, any ranged. And that way you get your healing cooldowns on cooldowns sooner because technically you're not going to the second set anyway. Yeah. So. And that helped us with timing the third set of spikes because we were always about five to ten seconds too soon on those with no one touching them, with just letting them like expire naturally. We okay. never really figured That's out actually, why that happened. So I, I know our healing lead had commented something about that. He was looking at the timing for it, and he was like, maybe we should let them star fall. Uh, yeah, I, so, so we always did it the second the second set. You could star fall and blizzards like third not set nothing yeah, yeah. The third set has to be nothing because if you do anything on the third set like we had literally one druid hit starfall on an early attempt and yeah, it like pushed them you. just enough that we were off by like three seconds or something like yeah. that um so so yeah but um but yeah that was i mean that was our kt progression it was just a lot of just like nailing the intermission like getting the upstairs to kill then downstairs kill within that 10 seconds and you know it was sort of it, it was just rough and then we we did start on sylvanas um Sylvanas is just like uh, I don't I don't know it's it's a it's a very weird like P1 is very weird in terms of like change I don't really know what's going on I don't know why people are dying yet but we spent about an hour hour and a half on her and never had a clean P2 right never had, never got clean in yeah. the P2 so I think it's just a like I, I don't know yet I don't know what the issue is I don't know if it's cooldowns if it's just people taking damage they shouldn't um, we had a lot of like those yeah. the little white swirly. There's like one the desecrating so, shots. So there's one pattern that is absolutely a, a troll because what it does is it basically it's like a looping, almost looks like a flower, but it outlines mm-hmm. the outside of the flower first and then outlines yeah. the inside and gets closer and closer until there's nothing left in the middle. The problem is there's one that also looks like that, but there's one safe spot. <laughs> so like when you see the big flower one, people are just like, "I'll just run to the middle and it's safe." And I did that one time and died. Um, and then. The, the one with the other one, I'd like roll out. So yeah, so we're getting trolled by desecrating shot, I guess it's called. Um, nice. Yeah, which is which is rough. But I mean, it's a, 
a phase the phase is definitely slightly nicer with the arrow placements right um because we're using a week or i think that that targets people with higher stacks to go to one of the two groups right so you always clear appropriately so that's really easy um but uh but yeah we haven't seen a clean intermission yet um which will be through what we start working on this week just sylvanas till she dies um yeah so yeah i'm excited it's actually it seems i mean it seems okay all my other healers are complaining about mana issues. I'm like, I have 80% mana. I'm just blasting. So, um, but yeah, KT, honest to God, I, I'm upset I have to kill that boss at least three more times to get the skip. But to be fair, I'd be happy with never <laughs> killing it again, just sitting the rest of the time. So, yeah, I mean, are you playing Paladin this year? Or are you playing Mistweaver? Mistweaver. Yeah. That means you're optional for KT. You don't have a DR cooldown. That's true. I could say we just recruited another Holy Paladin, actually. Um, yeah, so they're optional. Say, yeah, but the problem is my revival is so awful. My revival clears the second so kit because it goes like so like so kit with yeah. roots and then like the the whites or the the ice patches, right? Yeah, um, and you're so we, that so one. It, yeah, so I clear that one. We mask the first one. Like literally, that's my revival is basically a master spell. It's great. It's a great use of a of a raid cooldown. Super excited. So hey, at least there's probably damage. At that point in time, for it to heal there, because they just got hit not, by, the, by the soak. Oh, AMZ, we soak with actually, too many people. We soak with we, too many people. We have a uh, we have an AMZ on that, and okay. the AMZ lasts really. It doesn't do enough damage to break the AMZ. That's crazy. Yeah, that that ability doesn't do too much. I mean, we yeah we sack them in P three, but I mean to be fair, like we could almost soak them and then. The biggest problem is just you're rooted from the uh yeah i think the, like, the roots the really running. dangerous thing yeah yeah but that's i mean that's progression i mean you should get kt soon like that's i mean to be fair like cleaning yeah, up like I, the biggest thing for us is just was always the timings right the intermission timing i so. think we are reaching the point like basically with the with the control paladin downstairs to like fix our timings for us uh yeah. shout out to creamy uh i think we should make relatively quick progress i do think that uh i'm gonna talk with our healing lead about the like pushing spikes early in phase two uh yeah because cool do cooldowns come up yeah cooldowns will be up probably like 20 30 seconds like so the way i think the way it works is cooldowns come up you get a tank ads and then after that tank set of ads you can push the things yeah there's a little bit of a lull but before the big aoe soak or maybe it's right as the aoe soak occurs we love cooldowns up anyway for it, so yeah, um, it's pretty easy timing. I'll have to look at my bot. I'll, I'll show you what we did, but yeah, nice. Oh, cool. One more thing about KT. Well, I found out the hard way. If you don't collect all of your souls in time, it kills you in a minute. Oh, That's does it? It just kills you. I don't think a <laughs> tank ever had that happen. Um, we we had a situation where um, awesome, we pushed into the intermission, and I didn't realize I still had one up. My weaker was up there, like going off, going crazy. Didn't realize yeah. I had one up, so I was tanking an abomination with one of them still up, but I was fine. I was fine, just brewmaster life. Uh, and then it expired and killed me. Oh god, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. So pro tip: you can't Cl take it with souls. the debuff up, but you do need to collect all your souls, or you will die anyway. I will have to. I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. So yeah, for when they make awesome. you go brewmaster on it. No, I'll just tell my tanks about it. We already have a brewmaster apparently, <laughs> so he can uh, he can play that class. Um, God, all right. All right. Well, I think maybe we get maybe we get into a little weekend review stuff before we hit. So the rest changes of the to live before we get into changes to nine point one point five. Fair enough. Yep. Yep. So uh, so a couple of quick things, I guess. Um, a couple of hot fixes Blizzard put in, like not too much in general around this one, right? I think one in S Sanguine Depths. Some gluttonous ticks were not exploding upon death. They fixed that, so they take more damage, which is good. I think the biggest change here, though, is um, they have added or they've upped the appearance of um, cosmetic armor, covenant-specific cosmetic armor from the Corthia dailies, um, a lot. So I had looked after I saw this note, and I had gotten I think one piece, maybe two I, pieces. I think I had zero pieces. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I had one or two uh before this change and I have gotten three since this hotfix went in. <laughs> so literally nice. I've gotten one almost every day. Um uh cosmetic piece. So I guess it's a good change if I like to collect that stuff. I think transmog is an awful system and worthless to me, but uh 
I also collect a bunch of appearance stuff. I I, I roll trans on a bunch of gear that drops. <laughs> I just never use it. So, yeah. um, I mean, I like I like reaching the point that I have the full set in raid completed. Um, yeah, I don't. There's not very many tiers that I have that because we just historically have not had a bunch of time on farm. Um, yeah. this expansion's been different. A little bit of us killing it faster, and a little bit of the tiers being longer. Uh, yes. Um, but like, I think the only tiers I have the full sets from BFA are BOD because we sold mounts for all of eight point three, and oh, yeah. then and then Nihilotha itself because we farmed it for all of eight point three. That's true. Yeah, I think I've I've generally completed most of the monk sets. I think the only one I never completed was um was the HFC one actually. So from Legion, but most of them I have I've gotten all of them um done. So yeah. Transmog stuff. It's cool. I can get your covenant specific sets faster. Um so next up is Domination Shard updates. They Blizzard has basically added additional pieces that trigger the various set bonuses. So what they've done is previously you had to have either helm, shoulders, or chest to activate one of the three set bonuses, right? Helm being yeah. unholy, shoulders being frost chest being blood right um they've now expanded that to add a second piece that will trigger the set bonus so for leather you have if you have uh segment of domination legs uh that will trigger frost gloves will trigger unholy and boots will trigger blood which means you can have like say to trigger blood you either need boots or chest to yeah once you have three gems to trigger the set so Slightly, I mean, a good change, I guess, um, adds an additional piece where you don't have to like end up like we had a paladin that literally just got a plate helm yeah. uh, this week in our heroic yeah. farm. Uh, so he would have been able to to trigger the bonus much earlier um, so, from his stuff, from the unholy set. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but I spent a little bit of time this past week doing some fun math, looking at loot drop rates and... Um, Tier sets specifically, do you did you see the Reddit post saying how bad tier sets were going to be with how loot works right now? No, I have not seen that post. So it was but... all speculation. They were just like, you all are complaining about Dom sets, but this is basically tier sets. So like, tier sets next tier are not going to be great. So I did some math. Um, and <laughs> turns out they were right. Uh, it actually oh, really? depends a lot on how many people you have trading you. When you have people like in your guild trading you loot, the tier set's going to be easier to finish mm -hmm. um, because the blood set or the the domination sets have the gems that can't be traded so if you don't get the gems then like you're you're just out of luck yeah. uh, but i actually started this partially because i wanted to see the impact of that change to allowing a second item to turn on the set and then i forgot to actually implement that so <laughs> uh <laughs> maybe i'll figure that out later yeah add it later that's fine. So, so tier sets, I guess, are just going to be just as bad as what you're saying. In terms Unless, of... So basically, the reason that tier sets are just as bad is that you... is basically that they've only put each tier piece on one boss. And gotcha. if they add, like, so if it's a 10-boss raid, there's six tier pieces. If they put, you know, three of the tier pieces on two bosses, then they're significantly easier to get than domination mm -hmm. sets. But if they don't, if they stick with one tier piece per bo like each tier piece drops only once, then it is harder without people trading you loot to complete a four piece tier set than to complete a domination set. Gotcha. Got I guess because, the I guess because the, the domination gotcha. set each piece drops twice. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 I guess I guess that makes sense. But I guess it's going to depend too on. Well, I guess it wouldn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Like the traders are just the thing that makes it easier. Because like when they used to do tier sets, it used to be token based, right? So like that actually the idea does was... matter because. Well, it matters because um, it increases the number of people that can trade you, and so yeah. that increases the odds that anybody will trade you on like the second and third week, because yeah. you know if you're if your token spans four classes and um, that's going to give you a higher chance of someone not needing it and putting it up for trade on the second week than if it's yeah. like literally like you're a malware and only there's only like two classes that can even yeah. get it. 
I feel bad for our man. Well, I think we only generally only have like two or three in the raid, yeah. so uh, yeah, it's a little rough. So, well, that's it's awesome, terrible news to look forward to, but uh, but at least I currently, mean, yeah. I think they're going to be aware of the issue and do something to fix it because I think that's why they had the domination pieces drop twice in the raid because it it kind yeah. of fixes that issue. But we'll see what they do for nine point two. But that's we'll a little see. bit farther off in the distance. We shall see. We shall see. Um. So uh, I guess in other news, we sort of go through this. Um, so next up is, uh, you know, Blizzard has started the started to remove additional former employees and references to them from World of Warcraft. So Jesse McCree, Louis Bariga, and Jonathan Lovecraft, um, or Lee Craft, sorry, not Lovecraft, but Lee Craft. Um, <laughs> I just did a double take. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just... Yeah. Um, uh, they sort of remove references from those individuals from the game. Um, basically, this is anything from like character names, item names, um, quests, things like that um, have all sort of started to be removed. Um, and this is sort of a sort of aligned with their policy of like renaming Cree from Overwatch, um, and just in general having the stance now of not naming things after employees um, yeah. or other people in the community. Right? Like it's you had actually wild though how many different references mccree put into himself <laughs> there's so many yeah yeah and a lot of them are not yeah. that subtle yeah it's a little i i mean like i guess like here's the thing the way that i look at this like regards i think this is i mean probably a good change with with um yeah with what blizzard's doing right like i agree like naming stuff yeah. after individuals people can always be sort of assholes right about stuff so not naming after a real person sort of helps that um, but yeah, I mean, the amount of stuff that's named after like either Blizzard employees or just people that are associated with Blizzard is absolutely crazy, right? Like, yeah, um, <laughs> like and specific name, like for like on their actual names, which is like there's a bunch of like stuff that's named after players, right? That yeah. like player names that's sort of a little bit more overt and you might not notice it, right? Um, yeah. like I in Dalamir. Is like oh, a classic example. So, dolomir has got like a bunch of both classic items named after him and a bunch of other stuff. You don't, that's he's he, he actually he's one of the he, I think he still works at Blizzard. He might have left, but he was a player that like basically at the end of beta, you'll if you know about this, if you've watched any beta videos, he basically took people thought warriors were terrible. He was he the made this slam video, guy. yeah, he used to make this video about slam about just literally running through at the time blasted land or. No, the one South Searing Gorge, was it? Searing Gorge or Blast yeah. Lands, I forget. But like literally blasting mobs nonstop, not him to sit, not him to drink. And it was like, yeah, the slam video. Um, and sort of like he has a bunch of stuff named after him. There's a ring and knacks, I know for sure. Maybe it's a belt um and some other items. But I wonder if they're gonna go back. They 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 looks like they're targeting employee name ones, but I wonder if they go back and actually start saying like, okay, player items. Like I don't think they're gonna do that because yeah, that'd be a lot. Yeah. They're also a lot more subtle. There's a so there's an item actually named after one of my guildies. Um, oh really? In Wrath, it's just a random ring. I've actually gotten the ring drop before, and it would never have known that it was named after somebody. It's oh, not like funny. so. Um, for one thing, I think naming stuff after players is not something they're gonna do much of anymore. Just as as a general rule, because of this, but I also don't think people have the same expectation around like behavior and yeah i'm when, yeah. It, when it's someone like really high profile like a fiend i think at one point had an item named after him and mm -hmm. he's kind of a dirtbag um and that might have been renamed um something like a random item that's named after someone that gave a bunch of feedback during beta you know yeah uh, it, it's a totally different ball game yeah that's true that that is true yeah so yeah, but I think that's it'll be interesting to see how far they take this, right? Because I mean, a lot of the people I think are coming. Like they, they're also, I guess, on top of this. I don't, I don't think I, I linked this in the notes to. It wasn't in the post either. But they've also renamed, started to rename some uh, achievements too that aren't yes. named after specific people, but that have like sort of like my very... sack is gigantic. Yeah, that. Yeah, one. yeah, like my sack is gigantic, and there's another one. There's another Christmas one that's like ho ho. Oh, or bros before ho ho ho. Oh, yeah. bros before. Yeah. That one was always bad. Yeah. Like, so there the the bag one. My sack is gigantic. That one I would say is borderline, but I can understand yeah. given the current situation at Blizzard why they just went ahead and pulled the trigger and renamed it. That it's yeah. got a dumb name now, but that one I think could have could have 
been unchanged. The yeah. Bros Before Ho Ho Ho's was bad and should have been changed two decades ago. <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't. It yeah. shouldn't have gone in the game. Yeah, so I think there's a. It'll. I guess this is the the new. I guess the, the new sort of direction from them of sort of removing a lot of the. I guess the bro culture, like the sort of the frat. I guess they would call it like the frat boy culture, right? Yeah. Um. Um. Sort of things from it, and then yeah, also just renaming stuff from people who have you know questionable moral compasses i guess you could say right in terms of like their ability to interact with people so um so yeah so i guess more to come on that we'll see exactly how this works but yeah um bunch of people bunch of stuff getting renamed Uh, to be fair like i it's funny like i don't know i was reading through the post like i don't know uh i'm not aware like i've probably interacted with these names before but like nothing that i read through was like oh i know exactly who this is you know what i mean yeah like it's funny um yeah i don't know much of the references so um so yeah but in any event i guess that is the rename stuff um so i guess the the final point here that i want to or the final sort of topic from last week which is just from live but it's actually from classic wow is basically blizzard has stated that they're going to start looking at essentially fresh classic fresh servers a really confirmed fresh servers which i guess is a a concept that's been around in like the private server community for yep. for a while um or forever really but the idea is basically the server restarts itself so you are maybe not the specific one but they start what they call fresh servers which are just brand new servers that you can join and start from zero again yep. um and do so the this same grind be, so if it's anything like how it worked in the private server communities it'll be a new server so if you want to just continue you know clearing nax with your guild in the current servers you can do that and you can actually like keep what you have and also start over classic but it mm-hmm. would be starting from basically classic launch um as it was then and they would do the the basically patches like they did for actual classic and so okay. over time you know you start you progress through molten core and anixia's lair and you start getting the patches to release new raids and um it is another progression server but that also means that for example if you maybe missed the first classic uh, launch because you were busy with real life stuff, this is another chance to go through it. So it serves the people who are like classic diehards and really just want to play more classic, but it also is like people that maybe were busy when classic actually initially released and want to do it now. Um, So. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be cool. It's a, it's probably just another way to keep people engaged too. Right. Cause I yeah. mean the this the quote unquote seasons right is a is sort of a big concept across games and I mean to be fair I feel like Diablo two was the first game that I remember like ladder resets being like a big thing and then yeah um now it's yeah like I I mean I jump in every Diablo three season at least for like we'll say a week generally it's about forty eight hours uh in terms yeah. of like playing like whatever new build is cool and and doing it so uh, yeah I mean I, to be fair I think we're both in the same position maybe not engage in this but it's cool for the people who I think I will actually. So one of the so again, I really like leveling, and Mm -hmm. one of the things about classic leveling that really makes it stand out is like when there's a launch going on, there's so many people. Yeah, Um, that's true. And just like it's a whole different experience than doing it later. And so I really kind of just got busy and didn't get a chance to do leveling past like level twenty while the initial rush was still happening. So um, I might go back and do, do leveling. It really depends on the timing um, mm-hmm. because if it lines up with the time that I can actually like sit down and go through the leveling process while everybody else is and like do that, then yeah, I probably will. But if it lines up at a bad time for me, I'm probably just going to skip it and I'll catch the next wave. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be fun. And then I guess the other, I guess the other classic thing they put in here too uh, is just the, out, I guess they're calling it the Overlords of Outland for burning crusade classic is launching september 15th um and that's basically the tk and uh serpent trunk cavern raids are launching so tempest yep. keep and Trine caverns which is lady vosh and Elthos. uh prince elthos two very good fights i will say vosh is an end boss still high up there in terms of my like that was i think the I, I guess I guess you never did it. Um, not that this is a bad. I feel like that was rude of me to say it that way. But I was like, you didn't play BC live at the time. Anyway, in yeah. any event, at the time, Vosh was a was a very fun fight to do with with me and my guild. Um, 
also that was the first instance where my guild we 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 termed the we tried to be crafty through the instance so in serpent shrine you can cast water walking yourself and walk over the water to specific bosses you can right. also walk by uh the first boss like hydra storm or hydro something hydroxis i don't know some hydro elemental you could walk by him and not pull it uh if you want um we're very my guild at the time was very bad at that uh to the point where we basically banned being crafty <laughs> uh and any instance after that where we're being crafty we're like let's skip this trash pack someone would ever would just pull it because we're bad at being crafty so yeah uh, that was the first thing instance where we tried to do that yeah. yeah same thing with us um but no it'd be cool for the people jumping in uh, to be to be fair in bc those are i mean bc rating to me is probably one of the best I, at least for me like i have the most good memories from that yeah. um probably the most fun i had rating um with the folks that i rated with so um i just i wish i could do it i just i just don't have the time I, yeah. I feel like and it's not that i don't have the time to raid it's why i just don't have the time to level and gear up which is like that's the biggest problem with bc so um all right uh now patch point point nine point one point five. yes 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 so we did go last week. I think we did a, a big overview. Blizzard had kind of posted their, hey, here are our big ideas for the patch. Here's where our developer notes. Here's where we're taking the game in 915. Um, and then so this week, basically, they, they launched PTR. So we were able to get a little bit more detail about exactly what they're doing, um, all what's in at least the initial you know, PTR version, um, along with a couple extra tidbits. Um, so I think the... The biggest thing that I'm no I'll tell you just off the bat is this seems like one of the largest like dot five, .5 I guess you could call them patches yeah. in a very long time. I think um, the only not, one that really rivals this one in scope is the Mage Tower patch. That's true. Cause that yeah, that wasn't in a that wasn't in a, a major release. It was the yeah. Yeah. So I mean this is there's a ton of stuff here. So I think we I think we start with probably the the biggest thing people care about uh a week cap is being removed so i want to mention before we get into that um the ptr for 9.1.5 is up right now not everything that we've talked about is live in it yet so this is actually also a break from standard form for blizzard where they usually they only announce things after they go live um they're telling us what is going to be coming which i think is great they're like this is going to be hitting ptr it's not there yeah. yet. So Legion Time Walking and AoE Cap Removal are not on PTR yet, but the PTR is up and you can test everything else. Yep. Yeah, and the I think the the um the Covenant swap is not up yet either. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. But yeah, so the, the AoE cap I think was sort of something that, that wasn't in the original details they shared with us, but something they put in sort of a big blue post this week on sort of here is everything that we're thinking about nine one five. So um basically yes yeah, so they we cap removal essentially the idea is they sort of you know you know sort of made a little bit of a developer's note on it right um yeah. where the idea is they, they sort of hit at why they initially did it which was you know they basically wanted to reduce the effectiveness of aoe burst buttons against large numbers of enemies enemies right which is what we thought yeah. right they basically they, they copped to the reason being mythic plus they basically said listen we did this because we wanted to make Mythic Plus less about pulling everything and pressing AOE CDs, and that obviously didn't work, and it had knock-on effects, especially in legacy content, which is like, if you've ever looked at r slash WoW and seen any complaints about, you know, the AOE caps, um, it's primarily people complaining about going and, like, doing their AQ clears for transmog, and, like, just pressing, you know, pressing their AOE button, and five things die. And there's 50 things on them. Yeah. Yeah. So so the change that they are making to this is essentially they are, you still do full damage to five enemies, but then any enemy hit after that with that same AOE, AOE ability does reduce damage. So the sixth, seventh, eighth enemy will take reduced yeah. damage from your AOE. So it's no longer zero damage. It's just redu reduced damage. Um, right. Which will be... Legacy content practically means full damage because for legacy content, the multiplier that gets applied to low level enemies means that mm -hmm. like if you press, you know, rushing jade wind, it's just gonna one shot everything regardless of the target cap. Um yeah. Brewmasters actually so if you're familiar with how keg smash works, it already functions like this. It's just full damage up until five targets, and then it starts splitting damage beyond that. Um 
and that's how keg smash already works so you can imagine all of these things is just being like they're changing them all to work how keg smash does and that's not exactly yeah. correct because i think the formula is slightly different but that's that's functionally how it's going yeah so this will this will somewhat help i mean it'll be fun now that you do a little bit of damage to everything right if you do pull big um the other side of this too is that it, it reduces that weird thing where like you're aoeing and like one mob just never gets picked as the mob you're doing damage to and is it yeah. full health while everything else is at two percent or like you know yeah lower health, story so. of uh target caps on bolstering week right there Ex exactly so hopefully it will at least clean that up a little bit i think you still you know you still have to target focus specific mobs you know and watch their hps a little bit better but it won't be the idea that one mob is at full hp everything else is essentially dead right i'll be a little bit more even uh in terms of the uh the formula i think the question that i'll have is just like i'm assuming it'll still function the same way in the way it picks its first five targets and then yeah not that like it'll always pick the higher hp target to bring down and in line which that well so the way it works for keg smash and others may work slightly differently depending on whether they have a primary target or not and how they actually implement it but for keg smash um it always does full damage to your primary target um which is important for threat mm -hmm. and dps don't really have to worry about that um but and then if there are more than five targets it hits all of them for the same amount well, gotcha. it actually just always hits everything for the same amount except the primary target, um, mm -hmm. which always takes full damage. So all the other ones, though, take the same amount, and the amount is just depending on how many targets get hit. So if it's five or fewer, it's the same amount as the primary target. If it's more than five, it's basically like splitting the damage. And it still does more damage, but it, the, the amount of damage doesn't, like... Adding one more target does not add another full keg smash worth worth of damage. It gotcha. starts reducing it. Gotcha. I guess it'll work the same because I'm I'm just sort of reading the notes here, and I guess I didn't read it very closely. Um, but like the last paragraph says that this means that while overall damage done by the ability increases with the number of targets, the individual damage done to each target will decrease. Yeah. So which which kind of sounds like as you add in another target, they're just going to take less damage per target, but they'll still I guess there'll be a slight yeah. add in the the overall yeah. amounts. So. so more targets still means more damage, but it doesn't like linearly increase like a fully uncapped ability would. Yeah. Um, but if you're curious, curious what the list of abilities from Monk that are getting uncapped are, it's actually very small. It's Rushing Jade Wind and Fists of Fury. Yeah. It's only two. Um, Zero from Mystery. Spinning Crane Kit currently has a hard target cap, doesn't it? yes i'm almost uh actually no i don't think it does i think it already has a reduction though built in okay i think that's the way that spinning crane kick works um they built in the damage reduction into it already so um we can double check that though yeah uh the warrior my raid uh males is saying in chat blade storm at eight targets is a 21 percent nerf with the formula change jesus it's not good. Uh, so that's one of those things that I would hope that they work out on PTR. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like they are winning some and losing some because Dreadnought goes to it gets a twenty seven percent buff basically. <laughs> so you know, warriors. Uh, but for most classes, this is like sh just straight upgrade. You look at hunters, for example, they're getting their multi shot. You know. Back, multi shot yeah. beast cleave barrage explosive shot all of these things going from being capped to doing reduced damage at higher target counts is just mm -hmm. a huge huge for them um and this is good this is really good this is the kind of thing i think we actually said last week we didn't expect them to do this until the next expansion because of the size of yeah. the change yeah which they're going to do it now which is i I think as we we probably need a little bit of time at the end to talk through this, but I think this is a this is a like this is to them to me or this is to me their expansion saving patch, right? If they nail this, this, in terms this is of their like, hell mary, yeah, 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 keeping players happy at least to get to ten and then they have at least ten to to put in the like the bigger stuff. Like the, these seem like big changes, but to me, they're more like these are what they could handle in terms of a. This is like the large, like it'll end up being the largest 0.5 patch, but this will be like the limit of what they can handle inside that patch, right? Yeah. Um, they'll try and cram as much as they can in. 
So yeah, I mean, it's it's a good change from a. I mean, the community's been literally complaining about this since they mentioned it, right? And it took two expansions for them to change it. And I don't think the messaging has changed. And it really, to be fair, I don't know if it's really changed all that much. How, like, most team, most Mythic Plus teams were not pulling massive amounts anyway, unless you were doing extremely high keys or at the high end, right? And we still and, saw stuff in the NDI where they were doing giga pulls where pulls. they could. And you would just bring the stuff that wasn't target capped that could do damage to all of it. Maybe yeah, with like so, one DPS that might be target capped, but did better single target. And that's still going to be the case. Yeah, so I mean, I think their head was probably in the right spe- spot in terms of, hey, we need to curtail this. Or like, we want to make, well, maybe, say right spot. They wanted, to, they, that's the decision they made. They wanted to curtail this or change it, which is whatever. Yeah. Right. But I think they they took a hard line and didn't change it, which I think is just a theme, right? They they took a hard line and didn't change it. Similar like with Covenant Swamping and stuff like that, right? So. Or the GCD changes, which... Uh, or the GCD, yeah. If, they, if they, they come out next week and they say the following abilities are now off the GCD, then, like, A, I will be extremely happy, and B, I will be, like, flabbergasted that they actually... Like, but, that's, that's when you know <laughs> that they are really, really pulling out all the stops. Yeah, like in panic mode almost yeah i mean if that if that actually happens then i'm gonna start asking people to signal boost getting healing spheres back in the game because i think this, <laughs> the time is right the time is right for that so but yeah, yeah. so i mean <laughs> aoe cap removed um which i think is which i think is great um in terms of the rest of the game so we'll see how it plays out but a bunch of classes are happy um they also put in a bunch of class changes right the majority of them though focused as I look through this, right, the majority of them focused on sort of actually like conduit and uh, covenant ability pieces rather yeah. than like specific changes and or specific like class ability changes just yet. So first patch looks like they're just doing a, a blanket pass on um, covenants first and covenant abilities for everybody. Um, from a monk specific perspective, the only change we saw really uh, Is at all the was way of the fey conduit. Yeah, way of the fake kind of got a hundred percent increase. So that's just it's straight damage increase on uh on way or sorry on what is the name of that ability? I don't even Bayline know. Stomp. Bayline but stomp. It only applies on multi target situations. It's like damage done when hitting multiple targets. So it's yeah. a strictly AoE increase. You were already gonna use Way of the Fey on AoE. It was already at least for Brewmaster, it was already very good. Um mm-hmm. This doesn't really change it, but with the ability to swap covenants in 9.1, this might make it, it like if you were raiding, I don't think you would be picking Night Fae just at a base level because of the single target damage. You would go Night yeah. Necro Lord or you would go uh Kyrian. But with the changes to 9.1.5 where you can switch covenants on the fly, mm-hmm. um that's huge. Then you you can, you know, be carrying in raid. And then when you're going and doing your 15s or you're going and doing Forgast, you know, you can go and swap to Night Fae and just, like, stomp your way to victory. Um, so, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, it'll be, it'll be, I guess it's a, it's a solid change in terms of those areas, but yeah. I'd like to see what else they've, I mean... They didn't really talk much, I think, in, in any of these notes about class style changes, right? So we'll see what else they have in store, but it'll be interesting to see. I do um, think one positive change, one one positive change we haven't talked about from them letting us switch con- uh, covenants is that they don't, it, this reduces the pressure on them to make sure every covenant is viable in every piece of content. Like, that's we're true. going from like, now, right now, you wouldn't pick Night Fae because it's just not very good in raid compared to the mm-hmm. other options. Um, but going forward, like, that's fine. You can still play Night Fae because you can just play something else for raid. That's true. Yeah. 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 They can have more, like, maybe niche uh, covenant like abilities and stuff like that. So, yeah. I mean, it's a, there's some, there's some knock on effects, I'd say, to that sort of free swap being there. So. Um, which is cool. Uh, quick question uh, from chat. Yeah. Muksaksu asks, which skills would they remove from the GCD? And I can't speak for every class, but for um, Brewmaster, I would like to see Celestial Brew off the GCD, as well as Weapons of Order. And then for Windwalker, it would be nice to get, like, Invoke Zuen and 
weapons in order again off of the GCD. These kind of like cooldowns. Uh, yeah. Celestial Brew in particular feels really bad on the GCD. It's just a shield and GCD locking yourself and applying it after you get hit is a real feels bad. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's generally I think they've 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 still left a lot of cooldowns, like cooldown type abilities on the GCD. So it's like cleaning up that. But I mean, then you run into like the design the design decision they've made, which is like they want cooldown. So maybe maybe it's not a remove everything from the GCD, but take a targeted approach of like yeah, like Celestial Brew, moving yeah. off of it. Or I still invoke like Zuin or invoke Nizza. This is another one for Brewmaster that I want off the GCD. Yeah, the invoke spells would be nice. Even for like, I think across the monk specs, like I'd want to invoke off the GCD from a misweaver perspective. But yeah, I can see why they leave some of it on. I mean, like they they did it particularly because of like the whole burst stuff coming out of when was this change put in? Like wad, right? No, this change was put oh. in in BFA. Oh, was it was it that late? I feel like it's been forever. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's been a I mean, long time. Yeah. Expansions. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, but yeah, so I mean, yeah, the the cooldown type abilities are always cool to have off the GCD, but I don't know if we'll. We'll particularly see that, but yeah, I mean, it'll be if we do see the GCD change. I swear to God, I'm going after healing spheres because at this point, <laughs> anything you ask for, you're getting. So it's like a fire sale. I feel like I thought you didn't um, want healing spheres. I don't. So it's the principle of the matter, Emelson. It's the principle of the matter. I hate them, but they told us we're getting them, and I want them. You know, it's like that. Oh God, it's like when you have kids. I don't know. If, well, you don't have kids, but it's like my kids who are like. They want the one toy my other kid's playing with, and they will cry and stomp. And then when my my youngest, like, I just, just happened this morning, my youngest finally was like, okay, here, you can play with this. I don't know what it was, some doll. My oldest was like, oh, I don't want to play with it anymore. I'm like, you just spent 20 minutes crying your head off for it. Now you don't want it. I want to be the person that's crying their head off. And then as soon as they give it to me, be like, this is stupid. Why'd you do this? I just That's all I want. I just want to be a, a screaming little kid about this at this point. So. <laughs> um I would yes. genuinely be very happy if they took like if they want to take one thing off the GCD without going yeah. whole hog, take Celestial Brew off, please. All of the defense, I, like take take light of the or not light, take Word of Glory off the GCD. It's stupid that it's on it. Just take it off the GCD. Take Celestial Brew off. Take Frenzied Regen off. Just all that stuff. Just all of that. All of those tank defensives. So they're like low cooldown used all the time. Just take them off the GCD. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see if they do any of the GCD changes on that one. So, um, uh, the other thing. So, not really class changes related, but they did they did make a couple other points as we sort of um look through this. And actually, again, I almost I didn't put this in the notes, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little off script, and then we'll get back all on right, script in right. a second. Um, but they added um. They added a bunch of new soul shapes, so a bunch of new soul shapes and yeah. travel forms. So this is like a very art. I feel like this is also an art heavy uh, sort of patch too. So druids yeah. get some new travel forms. Um, and there's a bunch of new soul shape abilities, but I think we touched on maybe a little bit. But um, I think the druid stuff is new. Um, so yeah, so a bunch of of that's going on. They also added uh, an interesting thing where you can deposit anima now when you're in Corthia, which I don't think we mentioned, but which is a weird change because I don't think like having anima items is that big a deal. Yes, but... it is. I have actually had so many times when I'm in Corthia and I just have like 20 different anima items in my bag and only like two each, maybe, you know, yeah, an yeah. average of like two each, but it's still, there's just so many different items that not having oh. to go back to buy covenant sanctum to clear them out of my bags is, is nice. Not that I'm going to do very much Corthia because I gave up on hitting tier six and I'm just going to get my, my conduits from Torgas now. Um, I'm so I'm so grinding note, dailies. Yeah, new record: two point eight million health in Torghast. Oh no! Whoa! Nice. So that was fun. Very dope. Um, very dope. I one shot the final boss of Adamant Vaults. That was fun. That's awesome. I still I need to do. I did both my Torghast, but I need to go to Flawless Mortrigar to finish out the Flawless achievement. Imagine not already having Flawless. I so I, I so I was about to do it, and like I I was well okay. I'll let you, I was doing it at work on friday uh, or thursday and got a work call in the middle of mortrigarth and had to had to pause also mortrigar is like the hardest one and the the worst one to do because of the the mobs that are in there it's really the yeah. mortrigar yeah, is no bueno yeah I'm, I'm not excited about that um and just one other final i think group thing before we get back on script is they're adding a redeem souls quest a repeatable redeem souls quest which is honestly 
it's funny, like anima used to be the biggest limiting factor, right? But for me right now, because I've swapped covenants, you know, two or three times, I don't have any souls. Like yeah. I'm sitting on literally like 40,000 anima and 21 souls. And so I can't get the next upgrade, yeah. like to finish out the upgrade thing. So especially so um, you might remember in 9.1, in one of the hot fixes, they added this or in 9.0.5 in one of the hotfixes they added this thing where if you upgraded all of your covenant buildings to like rank two you got increased anima income and if you got them all to rank three you got even more anima income well that's where we are right now because there's just so yeah. much anima so now there's not only more anima from Corthia in general but we're also just getting more because of that that achievement yeah so yeah so we'll uh i am I am flush with anima. I have zero souls. It's super, super not fun. Um, uh, but yeah, so I think, I think that's it. Uh, well, not it, but those are sort of just some of the off-the-cuff updates. I was sort of just reading through the notes who were sitting here. Um, so the the other thing that, that Blizzard, we talked about a little bit, was like they've added legendary recycling, right? Um, so they basically, that was just a bullet point, but they actually now offered a little bit more insight of how it will work. Essentially... With legendary recycling, you'll get all your soul ash or soul cinders back. So you get 100% refunded on that. Sounds like you won't get the item or the missives back. Um, so you basically, you're, it's a, like you're more of a sunk. Gold. Yeah, you're out the gold versus out the soul ash or, or soul cinders. Um, which, to be fair, I'd rather probably be out the soul ash or soul cinders than the item in certain cases, just from the price of them, right? Yeah. Um, that's like, one thing, one more change I would love to see in 9.1.5 while we're, you know, while we're in this PTR. One more change yeah. I would love to see from 9.1.5 is a massive reduction in the materials cost of Legendary. Like, they, in the last, I, I complained about this on this podcast, in the last week of PTR for 9.0, in the last week of beta, they quadrupled the crafting cost of Legendaries. Mm -hmm. Like, undo that. Just, like, turn it, turn it back down. 25% just literally make it cheaper to get legendaries. I do not care about the wannabe goblins. I do not care about the people playing the auction house. I do not care about the people who are like planning to build their for fortunes on the backs of people like needing legendaries and being willing to pay a quarter million gold for a single one. Yeah. You know, like I don't care about that. They they can they can quit. <laughs> the, I'm okay with them quitting. Uh that's the so the cost of legendaries is is ridiculous. It's it would be better for the game if legendaries were a quarter of their current price. Yeah, they are they are really expensive. Yeah, I think I paid what probably close to three hundred fifty four hundred thousand gold for my rank six, which is and I'm on a fairly large realm, right? So like yeah, I mean we idea... still we we actually have crafters in guild now that over the course of nine point uh leveled up their trade skills to the point that they can craft most of the rank sixes there's a couple gotcha. slots that they can't do still they like but even with that we still like when someone is transferring a character from a high pop realm like they ping the both raid teams and they go hey does anybody need any legendaries yeah and, because it's still cheaper for us to import them from you know bleeding hollow than That's it is so for funny. us to actually craft them it's just no longer cheap enough that it is worth you know transferring a guild bank solely for that gotcha yeah gotcha that makes sense makes sense but yeah so i mean that's i think that's what we talked about last week when we sort of briefly discussed it but yeah you get your soul ash and soul centers back on this one from recycle which is you know lessons time and torgas and other things so um so cool so next up we have which actually i'm slightly excited about this new heirloom upgrades so basically adding a, another rank to all of the heirlooms um, that will take them to 60. So you can now heirloom up and go through um, all the Shadowlands content. Um, so they've added those items into the game. Um, they're basically just function how they always did. It's an upgrade item. So you buy it, use it on either a weapon or a piece of armor. And that weapon or piece of armor will scale to 60 with you. Um, Wowhead did the math. So it looks like to basically get a full armor slot or sorry, armor slots and one weapon is about 130,000 gold. Um, and then to upgrade Less everything. Legendary. <laughs> yeah. And even to upgrade everything. So all armor types and I think all weapon types is about half a million, about 430K. Um, so good on them. Um, the, I actually like this style of like armor upgrades for like legend or for, sorry, for heirlooms in this case, because you can either use gold or really any of the seasonal 
currency too. I always forget about that, but like you can earn like the Brewfest prize tokens and like the time warp badges yeah. all offer legendary or sorry, I always say legendary, but heirloom upgrade items. Yeah. So you don't always have to use gold. Um, this is a good change. I think this coupled with the fact that they've made a couple of changes to like Torghast le- leveling and Threads of Fate leveling where getting another alt up from 50 to 60, you know, should be fairly simple um, yeah. through the Shadowlands stuff. And then all the other, which we'll talk a little about one other thing they're doing, but all the other sort of quality of life stuff they've done with alts in just this patch, like the Covenants, like not even do the Covenant campaign again, the Maw skips, you know, the all the skips yes. they put in. Um, I think it's helpful because I think that's the the one thing that I think hurts WoW more than anything is not being able to play multiple classes, I feel like, or spec, or like, you know what I mean? Yeah, which I think, I think actually, nine point oh was hurt a lot by so many classes having Night Fae as their preferred covenant. Yeah, because that meant that if you played went like your first character was probably Night Fae, and if you went and made a second character, it was probably also Night Fae. Yeah, <laughs> so you were stuck doing the Night Fae campaign multiple times, and that obviously wasn't their goal. Their goal was that you know if you play a second character, it goes into a second covenant, and you do a different covenant campaign. But right, yeah, that's not how anybody plays the game. Like, I mean, yeah, that's no. not true. There are people who will play the game like that. And I definitely had characters that I had like two covenants and I played the slightly worse one so that I wouldn't have to do the Night Fate Covenant campaign again. <laughs> um, I still haven't done it. Lucky you. Yeah. I guess it hasn't been healers that went Night Fate. No, it's mostly it's DPS. DPS. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I mean, this will be the, the heirloom change will be good along with everything else. So, um, if you enjoy alt or enjoy playing other classes, a lot easier 9.1.5, which I think, again, as a, yeah, as, a, as like a retention metric is always nice because you get bored with one thing, it's a less barrier of entry to play like your next class, right? Or your next spec. Um, yeah. So, or really next class. Um, so cool. So, yeah, those are coming. Um, we've also got a slight upgrade to the most useless ui in the entire world the upgrade item upgrade ui uh so you'll realize in original 9.1 they added in the drop down that let you select hey i want to go from rank 1 to rank 10 or level 1 to level 10 uh d- didn't work um they've now changed the ui that little drop down instead of being like tucked in the corner is now up top uh still doesn't work um so you still have to go level by level but uh but yeah it, it looks nicer i guess i mean I know what they're trying to do here, but like this is like an easy, easy fix in terms of like communication. It's just like eventually this will work. We will tell you when it will work. For now, it's going to be like level by level. Like we're we're putting yeah. the UI stuff in place. Functionality is coming, um, and probably just and it's simple like, hey, we have extra UI cycles, right? So we'll get yeah. the UI up and ready for this. We just don't have everybody to program how this will um, work. Yeah, but like they don't do that, so this is just sort of a joke to me. It's just like. We have this UI that literally is not functional, but you spent all this time doing it without any well, indication. There's ever. there's other improvements to it in like how it shows exactly what's changing on the armor. Um, but the upgrading not like fully working, I do agree with. I can't I wonder what the holdup is on that. Is it like not being able to check which achievements you need to do the upgrades when you're doing no, like, so well, ten upgrades the at once? Dr- well, the actual the actual upgrade in the drop down won't highlight if you don't have the corresponding right, ability okay. to go that high. And to be fair, I'm almost I'm wondering if it's more of like they literally de- like they literally recreate the item at the next level, and the problem is yeah. they don't have a way of like taking the newly created item and dropping it in and then creating it again. Like they don't have a way to like iterate through yeah. those items because like the item it creates is like a brand new instance, right, or a brand new almost. Drop, it keeps so. enchanting things. I guess I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, the game's spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> the game is spaghetti. Who knows? Yeah, it's probably like it has to be in the UI box or it doesn't work. And so, like, yeah, ridiculous. But in any event, that is getting that's getting upgraded. Um, they are uh, one other final thing before we get into a, a post that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Um, was they are adding anima transfers for alts in 9.1.5. So essentially, at this point, you can now almost freely transfer any of the major currencies between characters right um assuming this will function similar way where like there'll be some sort of cost associated to anima transfers right you can't just transfer like one to one it'll be like one to 0.75 right um in terms of anima transfers but those are being added between mains and alts which i think uh i think it's another like again it's all about getting you able to play like i think it's the one thing blizzard sort of lost 
in the past couple of expansions has been they've put together these very like single character focused experiences and sort of lost and like, so you have all this, this, uh, this upkeep and this build up, right. And all these sort of systems around it. Um, but they lost track. They lost sight of the fact that like a lot of times people just want to play other characters. And if it's so hard to play another character, you just won't play the game. So you yeah. actually end up playing the game less than if they made these systems, not as like difficult to engage with like the second time through. Right. Which I just yeah. find funny in terms of like a very like metrics. They seem like they, like they're very metrics heavy in terms of like engagement and what they want to see. And like, this is a very simple thing to say, like, look, I'm fine slogging through this the first time um, on a character. Like I get it. You, you got to put these time gates in, you got to put like, like these sort of like build up systems and I got to put work in to get what I want. I yeah. don't want to do it a second time. Like if I yes. put in that work, like give me like a shortcut the second time. Right. So um but yeah it's just funny so now you basically you can do soul ash you can do anima at a certain point you'll be able to do soul cinders um i do think this is one of those things that um oh what's his name the the classic dev uh on youtube uh oh kevin jordan yeah that he commented on so many systems in Modern WoW just being rep grinds dressed up. Yeah. And rep grinds have always sucked to do multiple times. The fact that yeah. you have to do so many of them in order to raid actually really sucks. And um, while I do agree that ultimately I don't think it's the correct decision to allow us to like have all of our reps account-wide and everything... I do mm -hmm. think that the ones that are mandatory in order to actually do the content should be. Because yeah. rep grinds suck. No, like there's a there's a time and a place for rep grinds, and there's people that like doing rep grinds, and I'm not one of those people. There's never been a rep grind that I saw. I'm like, yes, I want to do this. Yeah, I've I've actually only had one ever, and that was the Winter Saber Mount in Classic. Yeah, the old one. I mean, like I did the I did the Argent tournament rep grind for the mount from that. Um, but it wasn't that I wanted to do the rep grind; it was that I wanted the mount, and that was the only way to get it. That's fair. I just did it because someone said I wouldn't. So I spent I spent a month, eight hours a day grinding Winter Saber rep. Awful. Um, but yeah, so I mean, this will be good. Again, I think that's a, that's actually a really good point in terms of like, yeah, a lot of these systems just feel like rep grinds. They just feel like log in get my set of rep for the day, log out. And like, there's no way to skip it or go faster the second time through. So it's just like, well, I just won't do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, that, that was, that, that, that's been my point, at least personally for me in pretty much the last two expansions, right? Legion and BFA with like artifacts, power and what, anima, what was the, what was the one in BFA? A anima something? power. Anima power, right. It was just like, no, I don't no, want to do it on right. alts. As a right power. That's right. As right power, yeah. I just didn't want to do it on alts. Like, I realized what I did on my main to get to the point I was at, and I was like, I have zero, zero want to do this on an alt, um, and get that up. So, in any event, that is Blizzard, uh, Blizzard Anima Power about to be traded. So, um, so cool. And then we have a uh, so final point. Then we sort of, I don't have a lore thing today, so maybe we'll extend this one out a little bit. And then we can talk a, a question or two at the end. Um, but uh, but we. Uh, Blizzard and sort of not Blizzard, but particular Ian and then Quick or Mike Ybarra uh, started interacting. Weirdly enough, uh, this patch uh, in terms of uh, in terms of like wow design decisions, questions, and things like that. So um, so Ian had a had a couple of points. Um, they've been they've been trading tweets back and forth, but Ian had some points around um, the Covenant sort of swapping thing, right? Um, and sort of along lines of that, people sort of brought in like um a little bit around like cross faction rating we won't get too much into it, but he touched on the piece um is that like from a game design perspective like there is it sounds like blizzard does hold some weight in terms of the story in terms of some of the gameplay decisions they'll make right where like right. if it doesn't make sense from a story perspective they won't make that gameplay decision now he uh blizzard or ian in typical i think lawyer fashion right said that story alone isn't the consideration right if something is extremely frustrating they will make concessions and sort of that gameplay or that 
sort of right. system. But but in general, it's not a zero sum like gameplay overall. It's everything sort of as the game together comes in to dictate like how it should play, right? Story being one of those things that can come in. So um, it's an interesting set of tweets. I mean, it's sort of just a little bit more into the mindset of like why Blizzard waited until now to do covenant swapping. I think people can have opinions either way, but it sounds like story did have some level of feedback in that and right, wrong, or indifferent. That's sort of what Blizzard sort of went with in terms of like not wanting to break story or like Im impact story by just having us basically freely able to swap, you know, from the start. Yeah, this is one of those things that I think would ring more authentically if um, it had been part of 9.1, that like when you finish the Covenant campaign, you can swap Covenants. Um, yeah. And since it it didn't it like i don't i'm not saying that ian's lying i'm saying that he's spinning it <laughs> yeah no yeah and i think i bet you i mean to be fair i bet you this is something they talked about anyway and just were like nope not a good idea right yeah and so like from a from a from an outward facing perspective he can say oh us and the team looked at this didn't make sense at the time now it makes sense which yeah. is probably not a lie, but it's also maybe not the whole truth, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's, it is it is what it is. I think what we're going to see, hopefully what we see based on this, right? And I, and I actually tweeted some, I forget, a, a dev basically tweeted out like, hey, it's great to see, you know, all of our hard work and our communication out there. And like my tweet, I tweeted them, didn't expect the response, but my response to them was like, look, this is awesome, but in general, the community is not going to be happy about this, right? Like we are happier communicating these changes we are happy about these changes but in general we're not going to be happy unless this is like not a flash in the pan not a 9.1.5 get all our communication out there and then 9.2 go back to making changes making one blue post and then thinking we're not then hey give us feedback is sort of the only thing you hear from us but we never hear the like outputs of, of what that feedback is so yeah um we'll see how it happens i mean it's just it is what it is we're getting sort of covenant swapping but i think the idea that at least Ian coming out and saying like, look, gameplay is not the only thing we care. We look at when we, we talk about these systems, there's other things that sort of fit into that discussion is I guess maybe a, a known fact, but I guess it's nice to some of the community to hear Ian say that. So, um, so yeah, so that is, that's sort of on the Ian side of the house. And then with old, old Mike Yabara, uh, quick as he's known, uh, in Gamerland. So quick, uh, plays a lot of games and streams on Twitch and as co-CEO or co-lead of Blizzard Entertainment sort of puts him front and like right on the front lines of like community feedback and things like that. So a bunch of people yeah. tweeted it. Tweeted it. So Quick made, I think, some uh, some headlines earlier talking about like they should really remove the AOE cap for Warriors, right? As he was doing a, a Mythic Plus dungeon, right? Yeah. And, um, and some other sort of like like comments that he'll make. And, and basically he clarified essentially like, look, uh, his clarification was basically like Ian, the team own WoW, not him. So like why Mike Yabara is now co-lead of Blizzard Entertainment, the actual decisions that impact players are not made by him. He's yeah, not the I one like that's going to go into a design decision meeting and be like, you must remove AOE caps, right? Like that's yeah. not not his role. And I think that's that's good. While, you know, Mike Yabara is maybe the kind of person that could do it and could, you know, be part of decisions that make the game better. Mm -hmm. I, in general, don't want people on the business end involved in game design discussions. Like, Mike Yabara might be the exception to the rule, but, you know, I don't want Bobby Kotick in the, in the design meeting going, yeah, you have to change this because it's going to, you know, it's not going to generate enough revenue, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think he got ahead of it where he's just like, I mean, he also tweeted, I think his second tweet is a good one too, where it's just like, look, like, you're fine tagging me in terms of community feedback stuff, but he's like, I don't make those decisions. Like, I, yeah. in this regard, like, I am literally like you as a player, where all I can do is give input to that team, and that team makes those decisions. Yeah. So he's, he's come out, like, this is actually a very good interaction in terms of like, look, you can tag me whenever you want. You can come in my chat when I stream and you can talk about like game changes you want. You can complain, all that type of stuff. But he's like, he's basically pretty up front and be like, look, I don't manage this at all. Like this is Ian. This is the WoW team that makes these decisions. And like, that's not my role here. Um, and I think in that regard, like regardless of how much he enjoys playing games and he seems like he enjoys playing games, right? It's sort of like what he does. Yeah. 
Um, it's nice that he's also not inserting himself in the situation. He realizes that like his role is much more, Hey, I have to manage a company, right. Versus I have to make a game. And I think that part of it, I, I enjoy, like, I at least like that. He's like, not, you know, getting too much into the weeds, right. In terms of like making those decisions, at least putting out a, a, an outwardly facing thing of saying like, look, this, I just play games for fun, dude. Like, I'm just like, yeah. you, like not. I'm just like you guys. I make a little bit more money than you uh, in terms of being a co lead <laughs> at Entertainment, but like I still enjoy playing games and hanging out, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I think it was a, a good set of tweets from him. Um, and like I think I've mentioned even on this podcast before, like in my limited interactions with Quick as a player many years ago, not since he's been at Blizzard, but many years ago, he's always been a very nice dude. And like I wish him all the best. And I think this just sort of exemplifies the fact that he just likes playing games, right? Yeah. Um, so and he's just in this regard he is like us in terms of like he's not going to be the one making changes to things he's just going to give us feedback and yeah maybe maybe as ian's boss he'll maybe ian will listen to it a little bit more but to be fair i probably not the way that mike operates so i think my two cents on this situation is that it's mostly a coincidence that mikey barra ended up being in the lead role in the co-lead role at the same time that they started doing these changes I think the numbers by themselves of like player counts, monthly active users, however you want to slice and dice it, basically gave the WoW team a come to Jesus moment. On top of the other stuff that's going on, like basically saying we cannot proceed as we are. Right. Yeah. And yeah. um Mike Yabara being in the position he's in is mostly a coincidence, mostly a happy accident. Yeah. But um, I, I do think that <laughs> they just kind of took a look at the numbers and went, fuck. We're screwed, buds. We're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. He's, uh, yeah. It, I, yeah, I would agree. It's just a huge coincidence that you end up with a guy like Mike. Because to be fair, like, like I, I have known of Mike like I said, for a while, but even when he was at Microsoft, he operated in very the same fashion. He didn't stream as much and yeah. at the time. He wasn't, I mean, streaming from the Xbox is harder. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he, he literally would talk about any new Xbox release that came out and like in depth, like as at that point he was running like third party studio interactions, right. Or relations. Right. So, um, it was sort of like people would say like, Oh, you had to, his, the feedback there was like, you had to, you have to be nice to this game. Right. Like you're, <laughs> you're publishing it or like you're working with them on that, on your platform. But I mean, he's still, did the same thing it just wasn't specific wow right so yeah um but cool yeah so those are some tweets so ian getting out there talking to people in his typical lawyer spin talk which that's ian for you and yeah mike gibara does not run wow so stop tweeting about stuff at him <laughs> <laughs> or well so, maybe still maybe still tweeted him but don't expect him to be the one making the changes exactly if you yeah, do yeah. Tweet him <laughs> also at watcher dev aka ian has exactly exactly yeah um so cool. So I think that's it for this week in terms of 915. So unless there's anything else, any other final little tidbits, points? Okay. This is all, this right. is all good stuff. This is yeah. just like across the board, great changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I mentioned, like the, that, that little tweet I sent out, I was like, honestly, super positive on the changes, right? Super excited. Also, like hesitantly excited, I guess. Or what did I, I forget. I should have pulled the tweet. But I basically was like, like, cautiously excited about it right because the idea is like well the changes are good and so nine what nine one five seems like it'll be a great patch there are hopefully more patches beyond it and like hopefully this sort of trend of like communication and just like uh, i mean like a lot of these things are long-standing like community issues that they're changing so like 9.2 is not going to be full of like getting rid of the aoe type aoe cap type announcements right it's not gonna be full of those type of things but hopefully yeah. the communication remains the same in terms of like look like we are you know we are doing x thing based on your feedback or we're, we hey we've heard you on x thing and we're not changing it for y reason right like that's the type of yeah. i think stuff that as players you want to hear is it's not that like we expect them to respond to everything but it's like there are like major tent poles in the community that have been silent on and since 9.0 beta like or even not like you know shadowlands like beta and alpha testing right that they're just now responding to you know over a year later year and a half later so yeah, yeah be good good so far they're good changes can't can't deny that so um 
All right, then I guess we we move slightly forward in our in our agenda. Um, there's no lore corner this week. I think I mentioned at the start. It's just I'll be completely honest with you. I have been slammed at work. I have done nothing in WoW other than raid. Uh, yeah. And like like I mentioned, I tried to do Torghast because I had no other time to do it this week and got screwed with work stuff too. So um, no lore corner this week. It'll be back next week. I have to decide of where we, where I want to take lore corner because at this point we sort of wrapped up most of the story um so we'll see maybe maybe i do a little bit more of a deep dive on like the covenant sigil stuff like the end stories for each one because i think we only touched on the uh the the um the uh the jaina slash uther kyrian one right we can right. go a little bit on yeah. the other one so um let's talk about it for next week um so yeah so then into my favorite section is is q a i don't know about you uh emelson but uh q a section we're back um we do have one question i didn't see anything else in chat, I think we answered the one in chat about which skills we removed from GCD, which would have been nice yeah. to say for the end here, but you got that out there early. So, you know, ruining my thunder here. Cool. Um, but we did get one uh, one question uh, while we while we were live here, which came from Latrape. Uh, and Latrape asks, um, what is the worst role you've ever done? Um, so R-O-L-L for the people listening. Yeah, uh, which I, to be fair... <laughs> the, the ability where you move... And inevitably fall off an edge. Yeah. So, and I will be completely honest with you. When I read this, I had to clarify with them about what they meant by roll because I had forgotten that there are two different spellings of roll, uh, one with two L's and one with an L and E and an E. Um, because I was like, do you mean like a tank or like a healer? Yeah. Uh, so I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, <laughs> worst roll you've ever done. Um, I I actually I haven't had, I didn't I well I got this question I put in here I actually didn't really think about this and now I'm trying to think about the worst role I've ever done. Well, you think um, I have an answer? Okay. So cool. in Let's my mind, it. the worst role is one that had the biggest impact on what we were doing. Like rolling off the edge thirty seconds into a fight is no big deal. You wipe it up, you pull it again, or they be mm-hmm. res you. Um, so there's a few like that. There's one on Painsmith where I rolled off with the very first weapon throw. Um. And like, nice. yeah, it's funny, but it's not hugely impactful. Um, I think probably the most impactful one that I've had is I rolled off the edge at the very end of Agrimar. Oh, uh, so we're you know like eight minutes into the fight, and I just fucking go flying off the edge, and uh, we wipe. That's, That's my fair. worst roll. It was um, trying to move the boss quickly away from ads that had gotten out of control uh we didn't have any more cc people had broken the roots you know everything was was crumbling before us yeah yeah. and i rolled to try and like roll and speed taunt and move the boss away quickly and just like just kind of like clipped my roll intersected exactly the edge of the platform it was oh, just God. I was just a little bit too close. And so it wasn't even really like I mean, it was enough that I kept my momentum and like kept flying. But yeah, yeah. it was just barely the edge of the platform. And uh, if I had been, you know, a step closer to the boss when I had rolled, I would have stayed on the platform. And I might have walked off the edge because, you know, we've all done that one where you roll next to something, you're like, oh thank God, I didn't roll off it, and then you walk off. Yeah. Yeah uh but got a couple of those yeah but that was definitely my worst one um i was also a trial th- that was my first tier ce rating i was a trial in the guild at the time um <laughs> so there were like layers to this that that yeah, was definitely yeah. my worst one i'm trying to i'm trying to think of a really bad one i can't so uh, there's always the classic rolling off stuff but i'm trying to think of one where like i tried to use roll like to negate an ability or like during it the only thing i can think of is i was i feel like i was notorious on the bridge boss in um i was rolling into traps yeah so basically because i try to so like not to roll into traps but as you do the actual bridge section the crossing so the every like the balls would come at you so i was notorious for trying to shoot the gap yeah and basically try and like get ahead and like dodge things so I would always do that. I've also fat fingered roll in a lot of cases when for whatever an ability, like there's certain abilities you stack up and then you just have to like move away, like basically bait them. I'm, I always get a little antsy. And so I forget what boss was it. It was one boss where 
it was probably back in Legion at some point. I can't remember it. But anyway, I remember distinctly like rolling early and then the ability targeted me while the entire raid was moving to me <laughs> and just like killed everyone. God, what's the name of that boss? Um, it would have been back in Legion and Tome, I think. Um But yeah, I mean I've I've sort of yeah, the, those are really the worst roles. The best roles though, which I have I have a couple really good examples. So the Orgazoa roll, where you just run you straight roll. and roll right off the pl- right straight through. And yeah. try and dodge. I've done. I so that I got. And then you real roll into a jellyfish and fall to your death. <laughs> so I got. I got decent at that, but it got to the point where like my raid leader was like, I can't handle wiping this boss. So like, if you do that and die, you're just out of the raid for the rest of the night. Like you're just done. We will like replace you. I'm fine with that. So, but those were always those are always the fun rolls, I guess. Maybe not the worst roll, but the fun rolls are where you're like, just sort yeah. of trying to like shoot the gap or like do something crazy. So. Yeah. 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 Rolls uh, an awful ability, though. I died on Fate Scrub the other day. In the stack, like, it was during the, whatever, the black lines. I yeah. rolled, died, but my body was in the, underneath the boss. And my raid leader basically is like, how are you dead? And I was like, can you please just look where my body is? Can you just look at where my body is right now? Because I'm, lit- I'm underneath everyone else. He's like, did you roll? I was like, yes. And I made it all the way there, and then I died. He's like, that's ridiculous. So, yeah, I hate roll. Yeah. But yeah. Um... Uh, also, fun fact: If you take the anima power that on tor- on the terror group keeps you from okay. walking backwards, that also applies. So you know, if you if if, if you you know you're a roll connoisseur, you can press the arrow keys and like you can backpedal and hit roll, and you'll roll backwards. Yep, yep, um, yep. Because you can't backpedal with that power, you cannot roll backwards. And uh, okay. I definitely rolled out into the bad shit during the intermission on Peregru because I tried to roll backwards and instead rolled forwards and now I'm even farther out of position than I was. I no longer have a charge of roll. <laughs> <laughs> You're just dead at that point, yeah. I mean, it's I hit Zen Meta, it was fine, but yeah, yeah. yeah. if I were not <laughs> a hilarious. tank, it would have been bad. That's hilarious, that's hilarious. Yeah, but yeah, there's some, uh, the rolling off the side of stuff, I mean, I did that I did that in like black hand um, at the final phase. Um, I rolled into like the goo on fallen avatar, like the the green stuff. Yeah, trying to make it someplace. Um, I just died on Sylvanas using roll because I I tried to again. It always happens to me when I'm trying to shoot a gap. So it's the one rock uh, bridge that at the end it's like there's a, a larger section and a smaller section and a little hole. Yeah. I rolled directly into that hole. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like you can't. I hit it and I literally scream like, "Oh, fuck!" and then just die. And you're just like, "Well, what can you do? Like, you're yep. just, you're just dead there." So. Yep. Um, <laughs> but yeah, rolls a fun ability. Rolls a fun ability. You you could say transcend is also a fun ability. I remember the first time I learned that transcend when you drop it, uh, you will also face the same way you drop it. Yes. Um. So I've definitely before definitely that the before we, of my existence. <laughs> Definitely messed up, like transcending and then rolling for movement, and literally not remember, not realizing which way I was facing, and then rolling into something bad. It's like right? in so. order to set up the positioning precisely on this author, I remember setting up a transcendence, and the transcendence would be facing out, <laughs> out yeah. on the edge because that's how I was facing when I set it up, and um, you know, <laughs> just right off, yeah, no, that's for sure. I've definitely done that a couple times, so. So cool. Well, La Trappe, La Trappe, La Trappe. I don't know how to pronounce that. I think that's, I think it's French. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, that's actually the only question, unless you had any others that come in, came in. No, um, no, I think that's, uh, that's, that's where cool. we're going to wrap up the show for today. Uh, I've cool. got grocery shopping to do because I have no food in my house. Uh, so nice. I'm going to go do that. But, awesome, uh, awesome. Yeah. That's going to be it for our show today. Thank you all for watching, for listening, for asking questions. Uh, we'll be here next week, same time, same place. And uh, if you would like to support this show and all the other work that we do over at the Peak of Serenity, you can do that over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash Peak of Serenity. And if you want to support the, the community and you don't necessarily want to or aren't able to, to contribute financially, you can do that by joining our Discord and coming and hanging out. Uh, the lounge channels, again, always great. Questions channels are always, there's always people asking questions. 
always people needing answers uh always good discussions being had so come and hang out have a good time and the brew section is still the best one uh and that is gonna be it for our show today have a good week bye